So I wasn't initially planning on watching or talking about the State of the Union, but since I'm a sucker for punishment, I decided to tune in, and I really, really wish I would have trusted my gut and not watched it because it's just its just a reminder that America is so stupid and we really are an empire in decline. Because Donald Trump, as much as we hate him, he is the perfect representation of American politics currently. It's chaotic, it's, it, it's dysfunctional, it's an oligarchic system with a billionaire as president. It's just, it's a joke. And it really is demoralizing to see this play out. I mean, you see this basically circle jerk if elites get in one room and they applaud everything that, you know, uh, Donald Trump says. If they're Republican, they sit down. If they're Democrat and don't applaud what he says, unless he's cheering on an illegal coup in Venezuela, then everyone's cheering. It's just it's a goddamn shit show, and I don't know how else to describe it. So, um, the first thing that I can't not point out is the uh, the plethora of lies that Donald Trump told. I mean, it was just lie after lie after lie. It's not surprising, but we should never become accustomed to this and not normalize it. This really is unacceptable. He claimed that, you know, he lifted people off of the food stamp program, which is a really charitable way of saying that he cut food stamps and kicked a lot of people off off of the program because as you all know that's exactly what his administration has done on top of that he lied about health care he claims that there are now cheaper and better health insurance plans i haven't seen them he claims that he'd never allow a socialist takeover of our health care to which the gop tweeted out socialism would destroy american health care but unless you click to expand this image it just looks like this <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, they deleted this tweet. And on the subject of healthcare, he claimed that, you know, he's going to protect people with pre-existing conditions. Meanwhile, he won't address the fact that his administration is suing to dismantle protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Uh, when it comes to health care for undocumented immigrants, he asked Democrats to join him in passing a bill that would deny them health care. So in other words, in the event someone is here illegally and they happen to get in an accident and they're bleeding out, Donald Trump is perfectly fine with them dying because they're here illegally. So, I mean, there's nothing we can do. And uh, right after saying that, he then went on to say, quote, every human life is a gift from God. The irony just went right over his head. So he says that in one breath. Meanwhile, we are dropping bombs on babies. Uh, or Saudi Arabia is dropping bombs on babies, at least, and we gave them those bombs. But every human life is a gift from God. Brilliant. I mean, does anybody buy this bullshit? Does anybody take this process seriously? The State of the Union? It's just, it's, it's hollow. It, it, it's meaningless. It is absolutely meaningless. And, you know, you see the uh, lack of bipartisanship play out by Republicans applauding for every single thing he says and Democrats kind of just sitting there angrily uh, not not applauding him or reading the Constitution if you're Jerry Nadler because that'll certainly show him. But I mean, you, you see this facade of anger at Donald Trump all collapse when he champions Juan Guaido uh, and brings him there and uh, is essentially trying to legitimize this attempt to uh, do a coup that is illegal in Venezuela. I mean, watch. Nancy Pelosi, she sat there the whole time, basically uh, not reacting to much of what Trump was doing, but she couldn't wait to stand up and applaud Donald Trump when he mentioned Guaido. We are supporting the hopes of Cubans, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans to restore democracy. The United States is leading a 59-nation diplomatic coalition against the socialist dictator of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. <laughs> Maduro is an illegitimate ruler, a tyrant who brutalizes his people, but Maduro's grip on tyranny will be smashed and broken. Here this evening is a very brave man who carries with him the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of all Venezuelans. Joining us in the gallery is the true and legitimate president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido. Mr. President, 
Please take this message back to your family. Thank you, Mr. President. Great honor. Thank you very much. Please take this message back that all Americans are united with the Venezuelan people in their righteous struggle for freedom. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. But in spite of that, you had a lot of Yas Queeners online who absolutely loved when Nancy Pelosi decided to um, tear up his speech notes. <laughs> so we got that epic moment this year, but last year, remember this? Yas queen, yas queen. Listen, before you yas queen her, let me put this all in perspective for you. This is the same individual who just approved NAFTA 2.0 for him, who just approved his Space Force, which is useless, who just gave him even more money for the military. Maybe before you yas queen Nancy Pelosi, really do a full evaluation thoroughly as to whether or not She's doing a great job at resisting him. Do yourself a favor and do that. Um, on top of that, you know, speaking of the resistance, we had a uh, Democrat slash Republican light Senator Kirsten Sinema stand up and cheer for Donald Trump when he boasted about his tax cuts for the rich. I mean, at this point, I don't know why you don't just join the Republican Party. If you have such an affinity for them and their policies and what they do. Um, another just bizarre moment was when Donald Trump brought on Rush Limbaugh to honor him. This is someone who is a racist, who has said absolutely morally reprehensible things. But because he's sick now, we're supposed to feel sorry for him and not, you know, talk about the negative impact he's had on our country for decades now. I mean, how embarrassing and stupid and Rush Limbaugh kept doing this weird, like, to Donald Trump. I just, I hate everything about this. I hate every single thing about this. And I, I really wish I didn't watch it. And then towards the end, you have Republicans basically uh, greeting Donald Trump or seeing him out as he leaves. And it's as if he's a rock star. They're literally asking him for his fucking autograph. Not kidding. American exceptionalism. Thank you. You did great. Great speech. Brilliant, Mr. President. Absolutely brilliant. Reagan has what you did was awesome. Wonderful. Mr. President, you signed this for a charity. Same thing again. Same thing again. Same thing again. Same thing again. Thank you. Thank you. Rush it. Amazing job, sir. Oh, Mr. President, it was so good. Oh, Mr. President, please sign this for me. Oh, it was Reagan-esque. They don't care how culty it seems. These are pigs who <laughs> will let Donald Trump take a dump on them if he offered. Willingly so. And, you know, if you weren't uh, sick and tired of the Republican display at the State of the Union, then afterwards you could tune in to uh, the Democratic response from Gretchen Whitmer, who, as Alex Koch points out, is a Democratic governor whose father was the CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. And she is going to represent the party <laughs> where healthcare is one of the top issues for voters. I mean, this is why people tune out. This is why people have checked out of politics 
and why a third of the country just doesn't vote. We have a clown as president overseeing an absolutely insane fascistic party. And then we have liberal elites who yes, queen everything that Nancy Pelosi does, and they're absolutely ineffectual at combating the most disgusting and harmful policies, long-lasting policies of Donald Trump, namely all of these federal appointments that he's been making, which he absolutely boasted about. They're allowing this. So, I mean, it's just, our system is so rotten to the core, and I just, I don't know how anyone can watch this and come away thinking, wow, I'm so proud to be an American right now. Like, who thinks that when they watch this? I mean, I'm sure it's the same boomers who support Donald Trump and vote for him. But I mean, overall, if you are a demoralized voter and you, you don't really tend to vote, what about this process is going to make you feel encouraged? I mean, the point of this State of the Union, really, it's a tradition because it's meant to legitimize American democracy, legitimize the process. You know, even though we have our disagreements, we come together at the end of the day and we respect the office of the presidency. And, you know, we stand up and applaud him when he says these platitudes and, you know, boasts about his agenda. But at the end of the day, it's meaningless because people's lives aren't really changing. Donald Trump boasts about how wonderful of a job he's doing and sucks his own cock for an hour, but he's not actually changing shit for normal working class Americans. And Democrats aren't helping because they're not very great at resisting, even though they are the main opposition party. I mean, this is why fascism is always able to take advantage of liberals and liberal parties. It's because, I mean, in a way they enable it, right? So this was um, a shit show. I expected it. It's why I initially wasn't going to uh, to watch. But regardless, there you have it. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?